I'm sitting here today with State Representative Karen Vashon, who represents Coastal Scarborough, which is District 29 in the House. And I am sitting with State Senator Amy Volk, who represents District 30, which is Scarborough, Gorham, and Buxton in the State Senate. We're talking today about question two. Amy, tell us a little bit about question two and how it impacts taxes, where the state has been trying to lower taxes in general the last couple of sessions. So I think everyone understands that Maine is a high tax state right now, and we've been working to lower income tax for not just our wealthiest residents and our job creators, um, small businesses, but for everyone in the state of Maine. So four years ago, um, if you earned just $17,000 a year, you were paying 8.5% income tax. These days, you're paying 7.15% income tax, and you don't reach that top bracket um, until you're earning much more than $17,000 a year. So um, in that same time, we've actually managed to increase our spending to education by almost $100 million just in the last two years. And we've put $170 million in our state rainy day fund. Um, you know, our economy has improved using less tax revenue. And um, that's because that money gets spent back into our economy and that benefits everybody. Um, so, you know, I absolutely feel like increasing taxes, even on our wealthiest residents, is taking us in the very wrong direction. Karen, a lot of people call this a surcharge, but it's actually a tax. It's a flat out tax. Massachusetts tax is 5.1%. What are you hearing from people as you go door to door when they hear about an increase in taxes that will make us the highest tax state in the country? I'm glad you asked. In fact, I have run into a lot of people right here in my own neighborhood that have said that they are no longer residents of Maine. They have moved to Florida. So this proposed referendum, if it passes, is considering that all of that revenue actually is going to stay in the state. What happens if all of our revenue and all of the people that would pay this tax leave the state? I'm seeing that already. The bill hasn't even passed yet. So I think we have a lot to be concerned about because if, if this passes, people are going to leave. Yeah, Karen, I got a call from a CPA less than a week ago who said that um, he has a client who had just called him that day, lives in a rural town in Maine. He makes between seven and eight hundred thousand dollars a year, and um, they're working on an exit strategy should question two pass. Um, this is a reality, and not only do you not get that three percent that people are going after, which gives us the highest effective tax. Um, bracket for anyone making between two hundred and a million dollars, two hundred thousand and a million dollars a year, um, because California has a higher bracket, but it doesn't kick in until a million dollars. Um, but you're losing all of that that income tax, you know, up to the two hundred thousand dollar mark. It's just so incredibly short sighted to me. Um, another big concern is with our medical community. Um, you are friends with Representative Patty Hymanson on your Health and Human Services Committee, and what do you know about what she has to say? Yeah, well, um, she's very, very concerned from a doctor perspective, and it's something that I also experienced in a meeting recently. I heard that um, five doctors were, were contemplating contracting with Mercy Hospital. When they heard about this referendum question, they, they did not contract. They are not planning to stay in, in Maine. This is something that I think Maine should really, really carefully consider within your doctors and your medical community. They typically are higher earners, and if they're going to be taxed at a much higher rate in the state of Maine, we're gonna have a shortage of doctors, which we already have. Already north of Bangor, there is no psychiatrist north, north of Bangor. So I think um, this really impacts our, our health and well-being in the state of Maine. So we know Patty Hymanson, who's a Democrat and a physician um, from York County, that she opposes it. Governor John Baldacci, obviously also a Democrat, um, opposes it. And, you know, I, I'm sure that all of these people, you know, would love to increase funding to education if, that, if this were a good um, proposal. But the fact is that it's not. 
I mean, the whole concept of taxing our way to prosperity, it, it doesn't work. It especially doesn't work when people leave. When they leave, we not only lose the tax revenue, we lose their spending power, um, we, we use, lose their wisdom right here in, in the community. It is sending Maine in the wrong direction, and I think voters should take a careful look at this. Amy, you chair the Labor, Commerce, Research, and Economic Development Committee, so you're face-to-face -face with businesses all day long. Mm -hmm. In California, they passed a uh, high earner income tax, and between two years in California, they lost 33,000 people that all moved to Texas, just to Texas from California, taking $2.1 billion with them. What are you hearing from the business community, from business organizations, and how this will impact future businesses that might decide to come to Maine? Well, I know the Maine State Chamber has come out in opposition. Um, NFIB is in opposition. Um, I haven't spoken to a business owner yet, um, other than my opponent, I suppose, who is for um, question two. There's no question. These are uh, entrepreneurs. These are highly skilled medical professionals, um, doctors, dentists, psychiatrists, um, scientists. The, scientists. These are people who are highly educated. A lot of them have high amounts of student loans, and that's not taken into account. Um, you know, just because you're income is you know two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year doesn't mean you might have you might have seventy five thousand dollars in debt that you're paying off and what we know is that it only applies to about sixteen thousand tax filers eleven thousand of those are small businesses so this is a huge economic burden um, these people are all our most mobile residents and um, I truly believe it will, within five years, result in a net loss of tax revenue, meaning we will have less money for education, not more. So you believe money walks? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, you know, I'll also say we should take a look at our, our school spending already. Maine is spending in the top third nationally per student. And something that we should also be concerned about is two-thirds of our graduates actually leave the state. So from a return on investment, that's a pretty bad return on investment. So you've got not only a mass exodus of, potential mass exodus of high income earners, but you've also got an exodus today of, of graduates. And why are they leaving? They're leaving to earn money and to have jobs. And if we have the highest income rate in the state of Maine, businesses aren't going to stay here and wealth's not going to stay here and people aren't going to invest in our state. So we are really sending Maine in the wrong direction. If you had a constituent that wanted to talk to you, how would they reach out to you to get more information about this question or any of the other referendum questions? I give out my cell number. Um, it's on my palm card. It's listed on my website and it is 229-5091. And I give out my palm card and my cell phone number, and it is 207-730-2664. State Representative Karen Vashon, District 29, Coastal Scarborough. State Senator Amy Volk, Scarborough, Gorham, and Buxton in the State Senate. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for having us. And vote no on two. Vote no on two.